This is an important video. I am in grave danger. I am making a record of exactly what happened before they find me. I am a whistleblower who worked as a power supply engineer for two of the major companies that claim to manufacture satellites. I have to hide the identity of my voice for protection, but I am real. For 15 years, I was convinced that I actually designed electronics packages, what we call black boxes that are on board satellites. I designed the Mark 271 power converter to convert the solar panel power and regulate it so that it can be used to power the electronics packages aboard the GPS Phase 5 satellites. I also was told I was designing power converters for the Motorola Iridium Class 9A satellites. Then in 2006 I worked for a company in Las Vegas, designing the electronics for the upgraded military smart bombs called JDAM that are guided by GPS. You can Google that if you want to know more. I began to suspect there was something fishy about every company I worked for when on September 17th of 2007 I was pulled aside by an engineer that worked for the Air Force and was the engineering supervisor for the contract. He offered to take me to the Trump Casino that weekend and we could have a few drinks and said we needed to talk privately about the contract. I was in charge of prototyping the electronics and guidance system at the time. I wasn't married and I had the entire weekend free, so I said, why not? I didn't even put it together that he had paid rooms at the Trump Casino. Why that particular casino? At least not until Trump ran for president this year. I knew that he actually knew Trump and sometimes played golf with him. I agreed to talk. We met at 8 p.m. at the bar and he began to explain to me that now that most of the work was done that it was time to fix the bomb quietly and put the GPS satellite antennas on the front of the bomb. I asked him what he was talking about. The GPS antenna is on the rear of the bomb where the fins are so they will face the sky and pick up the satellites. I thought he had gone crazy. Putting the GPS antenna on the front would have them face down and the metal of the bomb would block the signal from the satellites. I asked, what ground signal are you talking about? I was shocked as he explained that there were no GPS satellites. That all the signals came from cell towers on the ground. I thought he was joking with me, but to make a long story short, he insisted that it was true and the original design was because there were so many people that were involved. We had to build it this way to keep the military secret that we don't really have satellites in space. We argued over this for over an hour while I was getting sicker and sicker at the stories I was hearing of deception to the public. I was hoping that I would go home, sleep off the drinks and it would go away, but it didn't. That's not what they taught us in school. The earth is round and satellites spin around it and that included the GPS. Why did they let us get so far into the contract before we were told? I would later find out that everything we did was to hide the military secrets. They know all engineers are told that GPS is from comparing the timing of spread spectrum pseudo-random and encrypted code streams from satellites to calculate a position. I had to go back and I was allowed only one engineer who had worked for us longer than I have, to change the antennas. We had to leave the little white plastic antenna on the back behind the fins so that the soldiers would think it was real. We were ordered to hide the GPS ground antennas in the nose of the bomb where the fusing mechanism resides and it was to be sealed in that unit with the primary explosive so it couldn't be opened. He told me of other things, that I intend to expose to the world at a later time. I must say that I was frustrated and the drinks he bought me didn't help but it all made sense since I knew that our last field tests at the JDAM test site in Los Angeles had failed. I knew they had failed, but I thought that our antennas didn't have enough gain to pick up the very weak signals from the satellites. I didn't even use my brain and realize that even a cheap cell phone from Apple can pick up the signal. It had to be from cell towers not space. He went on to explain that the white plastic satellite antenna on the tail would remain to fool those building the bombs, if they were smart enough to know anything about GPS. The new antennas on the nose would be built into the fuse where the primary initiating explosive is so that it wouldn't be taken apart or discovered. I am very upset about what happened next, but to make an honest account of what happened, I must tell the rest of the story. 
I continued to talk with the blonde-haired, blue-eyed engineer from the government that I had trusted. He was getting me drunk, but I was not complaining. He kept talking about the all-seeing eye and even asked me if I had considered joining the Freemasons and socializing with he and others like Trump. I told him I wasn't into that sort of club because they were just old men. My head began to spin and I didn't know what to say because I thought we were talking about designing GPS modules. He then slapped a $1 bill down on the table and pointed to that pyramid with a floating eye above it that I didn't understand and said see, that is the ever-seeing eye. You had better learn who you work for, and he left. All of a sudden the smile was gone and he leaned forward and looked into my eyes and said you have the highest compartmentalized clearance on this project and if one word of what we talked about gets to anybody, you will be tried for treason and that carries the death penalty. Then he whispered something that caused chills to run up my spine. That is if you live long enough to go to jail. Accidents do happen you know. My head was spinning. I didn't know what was real. I guess he saw my concern and he said you will soon understand. He got up and left. Before I could empty my last drink two of the most gorgeous girls appeared at my table. Both were at least ten years younger than me. I should have gone home, but I was young, single and drunk. It really causes me pain to tell this story and be honest about what happened because I was so weak. To make a long story short, the girl with short straight black hair and the curly redhead claimed they had a room on the sixth floor and like an idiot I boarded the elevator with them. I am ashamed to say that they took advantage of me all night and at six in the morning, when I began to sober up, the girl with the straight black hair said. You know the truth. As long as you play the game we will be back. But, if you tell anyone about what you have learned last night, you won't live long enough to regret it. People know the truth. The government is lying to you and so is the Illuminati who is behind all of this. Pay attention people, I worked for the government. You should also know that the code name for GPS in the military is 666. And I'm sure it is not a coincidence. But the billions appropriated for an expensive program like GPS goes a long way in perpetuating the biggest hoax ever pulled on the entire world by those in power. That was a long time ago to me and I've lived the lie ever since with every project I've worked on, including going through all the trouble to build power supplies for satellites that don't even exist. I don't know if the earth is flat, square, or shaped like a banana. What I do know is that finding out GPS doesn't come from satellites and that there are really no satellites and exposing that could get me killed. After living this lie for many years and having to tell our contractors the lie to keep the engineers in the dark, I had all I could take. Last week I got into a fight with my boss, Drake when I could take it no longer. He kept telling me that it was okay and things would be alright and not to worry about it. He said he agreed with me that it was time to go public and he said we should talk to the company vice president first who was a friend of ours. He made me promise not to talk to anybody until we could fill him in the next day. When I turned on my block, I saw a car backing out of my driveway. It had two men in it wearing sunglasses. They were going really fast. I thought they were just using my driveway to turn around. When I got to the house I unlocked the front door and went inside and was going to turn my alarm system off. I used a professional alarm system because I often have classified drawings and documents in my house. When I entered the hidden closet where it is located I found that it was already turned off. I immediately knew something was wrong because it arms automatically at 9 o'clock each morning if I forget to arm it. It will not go off until I insert a card with a microchip in it. It is also battery powered and can run for a week without power. I immediately knew something was wrong. The first thing I did was call security at the plant because we have to notify them first when there is a break in even at our house because of the confidential government material. I talked to a man named Larry who is the nighttime security manager. He told me that under no circumstances should I call the police and they would be out in less than 20 minutes depending on the traffic. These are not nighttime watchmen. They are security contractors from a company that was deployed in Afghanistan and they were authorized by the government to protect their secrets at our company. 
Larry told me to to stay in the house and lock the doors and don't talk to anybody until they arrived. After about five minutes I started getting paranoid that something was wrong. At least I thought I was paranoid. My neighbor is a contract agent that works for NASA who protects two of the astronaut pretenders that live in our town. We had told each other a lot of things that we probably shouldn't but I've known him for 20 years and we even drank together on Saturday nights. I went over to his house and quickly told him what was going on and that I thought maybe I said too much at work. Being a special agent for the government he said he would come over to my house and look around. To make a long story short, he found four pounds of C4 explosive hidden in the back of my bedroom closet that was on the wall next to my den. He grabbed my arm and literally dragged me out of the house. We ran to his garage and loaded up in his car and took off. He told me he was going to make a call, but not to worry. It was hard to trust him because I knew he was government too. He carries a special encrypted cell phone that cannot be tracked. It didn't take him long to find out from his boss that I had been marked by the government and was considered a threat higher than any terrorist. The government can't have their cover blown on this. Suffice it to say that he did not blow my cover and he gave me a bundle of unmarked cash that agents carry for other reasons. He took me to a location that I cannot disclose. Since then I have moved three times, each time just barely staying ahead of the government. I want this story to be public in case something happens to me. I am guessing that if I can't get to another country that I'm a dead man. When the space cover-up is threatened, all stops are pulled to prevent it from leaking since it is the biggest lie the government has. I do not know the owner of this YouTube channel other than he is certain these conspiracies are true. The government hides everything. He has agreed to post my videos when I send them to him on secure channels. I tried to contact some of the newspapers that have broken the WikiLeaks stories, but they claim they can't touch it. The Illuminati has gotten to them. I am contacting a reporter for WikiLeaks tomorrow. There are things I can expose that are in plain sight. I will keep sending my YouTube friend updates and videos of my progress. If I disappear you will understand but I'm going to give it my best shot.